pages. Um, and, uh, but this, this is misleading. There were, some people say that it was actually the advertisement of the Renaissance in order to glorify research. I mean, they portrayed what was before them. I mean, it's something that was less than it was. But, but actually, there were, I mean, significant development in astronomy, cosmology, optics, kinematic, and the other matter sciences. And there was also, I mean, a lot of this development was actually by uh, the Islamic science, or the Islamic natural philosophy. Uh, so, okay. So, so let's kind of uh, present it very quickly. I mean, as I said, I mean, the scientific revolution is the process that talk about the scientific revolution in one semester. So that's very quick just to, I mean, set the background. Now, uh, it's important to, uh, to understand, I mean, when we call it scientific revolution, what are the implications? So one thing that historians, I mean, they are taught to be careful is not to be weakish. What does it mean to be weakish? Have you heard of this term? No, never. Okay. Uh, so it's like it's like to, to be anachronistic in a sense, to look at the past through our eyes. You know, to say for instance magic or astrology <coughs> is bad. I mean, these people, well, maybe they were intelligent, but they were behind. I mean, you know, they didn't know what that. What to say about Zeno? Zeno has its paradoxes, but you know, Zeno lived 2,500 years ago. What can you expect? The best, I mean, the best time. Or, or, or Leibniz and Newton were religious. I mean, yeah, I mean, it was kind of a, a problem that they had or something like that. They were intelligent or something like that. That's not the correct way. And what we try to do in this course, I mean, from the beginning, I mean, what I tried to do in teaching Zeno, and immediately after that, jumping 2,500 years, I mean, <coughs> not something that we should do in history, is to, to make a point that Zeno is actually much more relevant for our day. So if you think about it in this term, uh, it's definitely, I mean, was, uh, uh, it's, one should not look down at it, and one should not say that he didn't know mathematics, that therefore I mean, he had the paradoxes and he didn't have solution. This is an anachronistic viewpoint. I mean, this is like a British way of looking at the history. Uh, now, it's a, so it's a British, uh, so like we, to, we shouldn't, we should, when we look at the scientific revolution or what we call it, uh, we have to be careful not to be British. And this, the term scientific revolution is in a sense British because first of all there was no science at the time. It was natural philosophy. So but by, by the, the point I mean, of using the word science we already I mean we do it for convenience. Uh, but we should remember that when we use it, we shouldn't think about our science. We should think about natural philosophy. This is different than science. That's exactly what we are going to talk about today and try to understand what are certain changes that there were in natural philosophy that led to something that is close to what we call science, I mean our science. So it's not, you can say, if you want for convenience, that there is the history of science from, you know, you know that we call the course introduction to history and philosophy of science rather than if I call the introduction to history, uh, to history of natural philosophy, nobody would come to this course for, for half of the people. I mean, you would understand what it is about. But in a sense, I mean, it's uh, one has to be careful. So that's, that's, uh, all this introduction is, uh, if you take courses in history, uh, the instructor, I mean, to emphasize I mean, uh, uh, many times probably, I mean, especially in introductory courses, but also later on, that one should not be anachronistic. One should try to understand the history 
uh, in terms of uh, the historian echoes and the period, which is very difficult. In, in some sense, maybe the limitation. We are trying to do our best on the limitation. Uh, because, for instance, I mean, we talked about the dark case today, and uh, it's difficult I mean, to understand Newton. I mean, because we studied Newton as kind of great physicist. First of all, he's not a physicist, he's a natural philosopher. And secondly, I mean, it turns out that he's a very devoted, devoted Christian, and that he does alchemy, which also, see, nowadays is kind of, you know, think of the past, I mean, they, they look, I mean, for things that, uh, I mean, kind of unreasonable for us. Um, you know, how to turn, I mean, things to go, for instance, and, 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 and using all this, I mean, um, so the point is to understand that that's not in contradiction. I mean, to be religious at the time of Newton is normal. I mean, uh, to do alchemy is normal for natural philosophy. So, for this to a number of Okay. So, <clears throat> so there was, I mean, so what they said, there was a, a uh, natural philosophy. A natural philosophy, the, the difference from natural philosophy and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, physics nowadays is that, uh, for instance, I mean, physics nowadays, mathematics is very important. We cannot do physics without mathematics. Actually, I mean, it's many times called mathematical physics. Um, but natural philosophy, as we should see, I mean, actually saw mathematics as kind of secondary in some sense. It's a uh, uh, natural philosophy is supposed to find the essences of things, for instance, for Aristotle, I mean, the essence, things, the essence of, of, of natural objects and, and so on. And it wasn't clear, I mean, for a long time uh, that, uh, uh, that mathematics, I mean, is the right tool, I mean, to study. So that's the reason, I mean, maybe one of the reasons that uh, historian uh, think, I mean, historian of science, that why mathematics wasn't so prominent even before the Renaissance. It was, I mean, to some extent, but as we shall see, I mean, it became more prominent after that. And that's partly because the concept of natural philosophy changed. So far as not, I mean, natural philosophy, mathematics is not that central. It's not that it's not important for Calculating, I mean, we have Pythagoras, we have, I mean, great uh, uh, ancient Greek uh, mathematician, and, you know, after that, I mean, through the uh, Middle Ages. Um, so, mathematics was always there, but the question is whether it was like as important, for instance, as natural philosophy. The question is whether the university, being mathematician, was as important as being natural philosophy. And it turns out that, the, especially given I mean, the influence of Aristotle on the Middle Ages uh, philosophy, that mathematics and, and the mixed mathematical sciences, I mean, that, that kind of uh, uh, like uh, astronomy, for instance, were considered in some sense second grade I mean, citizens. Because of the conception that natural philosophy, I mean, that, that mathematics maybe is not a good tool or not the right to, to find the essences of things, the most important things about it. It's good for calculating, for predicting, and so on. Okay. So, uh, the word that science, what there was, I mean, there were like different things that people did, for instance. So people did things like uh, astronomy, optics, mechanics, and also people did the uh, medical based tradition, like anatomy, physiology, and Ecology. And actually, people who did it were called natural philosophers. But we were anatomists, I mean, what we call anatomists. I mean, uh, it was natural philosophy, and, and for instance, what we call anatomists nowadays wasn't necessarily, I mean, a doctor before. So, for instance, in the 18th century, if you look at the uh, medical practitioner, practitioner, then it's much more variable. The artists, for instance, they I mean, dissections and the uh, anatomical model. There are some that are surgeons. There are others that I mean, are, are artisans and so on. And they're all competing 
in a sense, I mean, the fact that the doctors now are the most influential is because they manage, I mean, to sell themselves in a certain way and to marginalize the others. But if you look, I mean, in the past, it wasn't like that. But for instance, I mean, uh, uh, these things, I mean, were related to natural philosophy, and many of the practitioners were natural philosophers, not scientists. Okay. So, anyway, the issue to understand, I mean, and the important thing is, as I said, is to understand that during the, what we call the scientific revolution for convenience, uh, a period that were very significant changes, and the concept of natural philosophy changed uh, in the sense that it became much more related to mathematics and much more related to empirical physics. I'm saying that, I mean, that, like, what we call scientific inquiry is very much I mean, related to empirical observation and experiments. In some sense, I mean, if you talk to a lot of physicists, that we say that metaphysics is maybe interesting, but it's not really as important as doing like something empirical, and therefore we shouldn't spend time, I mean, in class doing that. I mean, we can talk about it, you know, in the pub or when we retire, or when it's interesting, I mean, and so on, but, but it's not that, uh, but there wasn't the conception. Actually, a lot of the, a lot of the work that was done, for instance, uh, before the Renaissance, and even during the Renaissance, was actually to look at books and to learn, or even doing anatomical models. It's not that you just look at the body, you look at the books and you look at what is the way to draw things. And you look at models, and that's influenced the way you draw and the way you model. So books, for instance, were very important to be uh, a book from antiquity of books that were believed to be. I mean, uh, coming from, especially from people like Plato, Joseph like Plato, and Aristotle, were very important and had authority. So to learn from them is like to, it's like we, people who are believers reading the Bible, I mean, I believe that the Bible said the truth. So in a sense, I mean, like, there was a knowledge, I mean, and there was as important to me as doing experiments. But there was a change in the, in the Renaissance, and I mean, during the period that we call I mean, the scientific revolution in the sense that uh, it's not that the way experiment before, but experimental and empirical, I mean, method became changed in a sense and became much more common. And that the mathematics, from being more instrumental, became more essential to describing nature. And that's, if you think, I mean, these are two of maybe the most important things, I mean, in, in modern science. You won't find many sciences, whether social or natural, that are not mathematical. You know? uh, even in cases, I mean, like I studied economics, for instance, even in cases in which it seems sometimes, I mean, kind of strange to give a mathematical model, you still have a mathematical model, you still spend really like a month or so studying it and solving it, although it's very idealized and there is a question whether it's a good and so on. I mean, uh, not doing that, consider in a sense not to be science. Okay. So, so the mathematization of nature, I mean, one of the important things that happened in this, and it's, as we shall see, it's also connected to magic. I mean, that uh, actually natural magic, I mean, there, was, I mean, there were different factors that seem to be relevant, and uh, uh, all of them, I mean, uh, and, and kind of it's not easy to say what influence what, but uh, uh, but part of, I mean, the, the process, I mean, that was important in shaping, I mean, what we call modern science, I mean, was the mathematization of nature. So there was a change in the perception of the role of mathematics in uh, the study of nature. So, so before, before what we call the scientific revolution, it seems that there was more instrumentalist uh, perspective of mathematics. Instrumentalist in the sense that when you use science, I mean, you use mathematics to calculate things. 
but it's not necessarily that mathematics will tell you something essential about the object. So if you want to understand, for instance, I thought you want to understand why things, you know, tend to go to the where the nature belongs. I mean, mathematics would not be relevant. <coughs> but when you want to calculate, you know, where you should find them, then you can use mathematics. So it's more like uh, it's more instrumental in the sense that if you want prediction, if you want to, uh, if you want to plan things, you use mathematics. Uh, so instrumentalists believe that mathematics. Mathematical theories are put forward very hypothetical in order to facilitate calculation and predictions. So it's an important role, I mean, important thing, but, uh, uh, but it's kind of limited, this picture. Uh, the realist, by contrast, insists, insists that mathematical analysis reveal how things must be. Uh, and uh, if the calculation works, it's because it must be because uh, the proposed theory, I mean, uh, is true or gets something right about nature. So then mathematics is also a good tool to use for natural philosophy to find what is the essence of things. Now, it's not a new view. Uh, there was no Pythagoras. Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras was a important uh, philosopher, and Pythagorean, I mean, were well, like a school. It was both philosophical school but also religious. And one of the things that Pythagorean, at least the philosopher, thought that the world is constituted by numbers. So obviously they thought back then, I mean, that mathematics is very important. If the world is constituted by numbers, by mathematical entities, uh, or at least in mathematics, is, can, can describe something constitutive about the world. Uh, that means that mathematics is very, very prominent in the study of nature. You understand well I mean, mathematics and how mathematics like work in the science, like astronomy or something like that. You can understand something about not only how to calculate the mathematics, but how nature is. So what happened in the Renaissance, in a sense, I mean, it's like uh, that, that mathematics became more prominent and they became more a realist view of uh, the role of mathematics in the study of nature. It's not only as an instrument, it's also a way to understand nature better, the essence. We see, I mean, at the end, I mean, a, a quotation from Galilei, very important uh, natural philosopher. Yeah, what is the nature of nature? In sense? I mean, so the, 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 the realists think that obviously it is instrumental, so they don't deny that it's is important, but I think it's more than just instrumental. By knowing mathematics, by understanding uh, mathematics, I mean, by understanding the language of mathematics, the, the world is written in, in some sense in mathematical terms.